Welcome to the channel. This is Reliable Rudy. Today we're going to pick up with our A.O. Smith stock analysis with a part 3 video and we're going to focus more on the charting aspect of A.O. Smith. Um, if you don't know how we got these numbers or are not up to date with our analysis currently, I have a part 1 and a part 2, so feel free to go back and watch those. But picking up from where we left off, first I'll say I'm not a licensed financial advisor. Everything in this video contains only my opinion and is for entertainment purposes only. So this was the second analysis discounted cash flow that we ran for the company. In the first video, we went over the financial statements. Second video, we made this projection on where we are interested in buying this stock. Now you can see in my history, these are my most recent uh, analysis of the company. Now, me personally, I like to be conservative. Uh, so I'm going to use my more conservative numbers that I use, and I am going to be more interested in this stock price right here. Is there anything that we can find in the chart where uh, we could see a potential drop to this buying area, or maybe even down to these low to middle assumptions? I don't know. We're going to go into the chart right now. This is A.O. Smith. We're on a week chart. Every one of these little candles right here represents one whole trading week. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to set a trend line. Now I can see we have a nice correlating trend line that I can potentially draw out right here. So let's just see if we can get as many points of contact as possible. Now I like our trend line right there. I can see multiple points of contact, even this double bottom. Now I might actually lower that a little bit right around there because I see this is where we actually do crack this trend line. Now let's zoom into this. Now let's not, let's not forget on our way up this is acted as support. Now when we crack this trend line you can see we try to get back on top of it. It acts as support. Now when we crack it, it's acting as resistance. I like the look of that. Now when we do push that, this could be taken as a back test of that trend line. So back on top, now we expect it to act as support, support, support. And now we haven't come in contact with this trend line since. So is it possible that we get back down to this trend line? If I see the current price, if we were to fall straight to this, this is right around 25 to $30 is where our trend line is currently sitting. Now I can see looking back at our valuation of the company, I'm very interested in the stock price at that range. So it would be, if we do get a fall to this trend line, I'm going to be very interested in potentially starting a position in this company. Um, so nonetheless, let's go over the history of the stock. This was a publicly traded stock in 1983. Now I can see this first initial drop is not a slouch of a drop by any means. Around 63%. So let's put a fib tool through that. Fib tool, I can see full extension right here. If I were to pull this over, we set a double top right at our full extension. What is this percent fall right there? Let's be let's take a look and let's not forget we see a lower high where this double top comes in. I see a one, two, three, four five wave structure reverting down to the trend line where we set a higher low double bottom get an extended right leg and look at after we get this extended right leg look at this fall right here we come just back test the neckline if i wanted to draw this trade out you would have hit on a nice little swing trade right there been out at a three to one and potentially right back in off the trend line so um pretty good stuff right there i would say definitely some opportunities that took place during this time. Now, from this five wave structure, I'm gonna take another FIB tool and let's see what type of extensions we get right here. I can see, yeah, we get rejected at our first extension. Now, what is this percent fall? Now, same scenario, I see a one, two, three, four, five wave structure. Now, we crack this trend line in this five wave structure, but ultimately we get back on top of it. So is this a justified fall from a rejection from our first extension? I think it is. So I'm going to actually get rid of this fib tool. Now I can see if I were to drag this all the ways over, we actually do get some sell off at our full extension. So some people did keep this up on their charts, but ultimately I would have taken this out and I would have put a new fib tool through this drop right here. What is this drop right here? 63%. You know, it sounds like I keep saying 63%. What was this drop? 
66%. I mean, geez. But nonetheless, let's put a fib tool through this. Now you can see we get a full extension. We actually shoot through that extension. Look how we hold on top of that full extension. Now one thing about the fib tool is it is not 100% accurate. Maybe something fundamentally changed in the business that brought demand to this stock for us to continue running over top of this extension. Simple supply and demand. If more people want to buy than sell, the stock is going to keep going up. But at this full extension, I if we zoom into this, I see we have a left leg, we have a neckline built, and we have a double bottom extended right leg. And look at this wick down right to our neckline. Look at the buying pressure that came in right here. That's pretty extraordinary if, if, if I were to say so myself. So we're actually going to draw this trade out and see how I probably could have played this if I were uh, looking at this stock. So if this is where my neckline is at, look, you get triggered in on the money. That is crazy to me. Now here's your risk. Now let's see what this reward is. So that's about a 1 to 1. That's our 2 to 1. And that's our 3 to 1. Look. Boom. Here's your risk. You get a 1 to 1, 2 to 1, 3 to 1. Boom. Sell off on your 3 to 1 risk. That is, that's pretty crazy to me. Now this stock does continue getting bullish off of this. I'm sure there's some sort of trend line in here that people were buying. And you know it's not like this was the year 2020 or 2021 when uh, the United States printed a bunch of money and this benefited greatly from stimulus checks. No, this happened over the course of 2016 to 2018. But what, what, if we remember from the last video when we were looking at the revenue, the revenue declined in 2018 after it had already run this much. Isn't that crazy? Now look at this. I can also see a one, two, three, four, five wave structure and what is this percent fall? I'd want to know what this percent fall is. If this is 63%, I'm going to fall out of my chair. Okay, only 50%. But still, that is a pretty significant fall from an overextended stock. So I'm going to completely take out that FIB tool. I'm going to put a new FIB tool in right here. Look, we put our all-time high price gets rejected off this first extension. Now, you can play around with this however you want. You can match that up on the dot if you wanted to right there. And then look at this sell-off. Let's just, let's just cancel out all our lines, put a new one in right there. Look at that. What is this sell-off? Now, let's go back quickly and redraw our trend line in right about there roughly. Give or take, you know, that's a pretty solid trend line, I would say. I like having that trend line in right there. Now, what could potentially transpire with this drop? Now, we've seen multiple five-wave structures throughout the history of this stock. Let's see what would happen if we potentially got a five-wave structure. Is there a way that we can match this up to get down to this trend line? So, let's put a fib tool, top of the move, bottom of the move. Now, if this is a now this is a pretty solid drop right here. What is this drop? Roughly 40% drop that we had right here. So, if this is a potential wave one, I'm looking for a wave two to retrace. Where could this retrace at? Well, I see a top, top, top right into my 618 retracement, triple top into my 618 retracement. So, if this were to retrace, if this is a wave one. A wave two into my 618 retracement. It's potential that we get a wave three that cracks support. Now, what is our percent drop here? 40%. So we're going to go from our 618 retracement and say 40% drop puts me right there. So we're going to lower this line down a little bit. And let's draw that back in there for a 40% drop. Roughly right in there. Now, what do I have? Let's put a horizontal line right there. And what do I have built in right here? Let's zoom into where. I'll be damn. Look at that. Right at a gap fill. On this, on this day, we gap up the next day, and this gap never got filled. Right at the end of my wave three. Isn't that a coincidence? Now, I can also see there's another gap right here and another gap right there. So this is going to actually be a potential buying window 
right there. Isn't it crazy how they're all like the same distance apart from each other? I find that very crazy. Now, I also see another gap right there. So we're going to mark that into our chart. So if we do end up getting a potential wave three right here, what am I going to look for after that? I'm going to look for a wave four that back tests the bottom of wave one. Now, from the top of my wave four, I'm going to expect a wave five to come in. Now, we have a 40% drop, a 40% drop. Now, it's potential we get a wave five that could be another 40% drop right here. Now, where is that going to put us? Well, we're through our, our gap fill right here. Now, a 40% drop puts me right about there. Now, let's put a horizontal line right there. Right there. So, that is going to put us... For a potential five wave structure, isn't it crazy how this is very close to our trend line right there? Now, what else do we have built up at this support at the end of our five wave structure? I can see we have a nice mess of support right here. Isn't that crazy? And I do see a gap fill at 32. So we're going to mark this gap fill and we're going to switch it over to a day chart and see if there's anything else that we can find inside of this. So, yeah, look at that support built up at the end of our potential drop of our five wave structure. So, I can see there is a gap fill. Here's a gap fill. And we have one last gap fill right there. Same scenario. Look at these distance apart from each one of these. Now, if we do get a wave five right here, I would expect buying pressure off of those gaps because we're getting very close to that trend line. And let's not forget, I like the valuation of the company right here. Where are those gaps at? We got a gap at 32.3, we got a gap at 32.91 cents, and we got a gap at 33.50. Do I like the stock, the value of the stock in that range? Yes, that is right in between my low and middle assumptions. I'm going to be very interested in potentially building a position over the course of that time. Now, even if I go to my other assumptions right here, let it load. Those prices are below all of my low assumptions. Do I think it's possible for the company to put those numbers up over the next 10 years? Yes, I do. I'm going to be very interested in the stock if we get price action like that. So that is going to complete my charting analysis for the company. Uh, yeah, like I said, very interested in this stock. If we do get a type of structure down here, I could potentially think about starting a position in these 40s where we have these lines drawn out. Um, do I like the value of the company there? Yeah, it's in between my low and middle assumptions. I like the value of the company right there. So, yeah, that is my charting analysis. To end this video, we are going to quickly go to the holders of the company. Now I can see top mutual fund holders, Vanguard Total Stock Market Index Fund. I am actually a holder of this company without even knowing. That is the beauty of VT. You own the entire world's economy. I have benefited greatly from this stock without even realizing it. So let's say I'm wrong with this entire analysis and we actually do get a full extension. So let's take out this FIB tool and go back to our original FIB tool that we, we can see is getting price action. We got rejected off our first extension. Let's say I'm wrong in this analysis and we get a full extension and I miss out on it. I don't start a position in it. I'm still going to benefit from holding this in my Vanguard Total Stock Market Index Fund. That is the beauty of VT. I'm a holder in this without even knowing and I've benefited greatly from it in this run. Now, I hope you guys liked the video. Um, if you guys have any questions or any comments, I'm more than welcome to answer or have a discussion on any of this charting analysis. But this is going to wrap up the video. I hope you guys liked it, and we'll see you on the next video.